Wanakam, Namaskar and good morning everybody. On behalf of Tripura Pharmacy Institute, we wholeheartedly welcome all of you for the three-day workshop on Vailasakti Medical Pharmacy or Vailasakti Parma Shiksha. This is an ancient Indian medical science. We wholeheartedly welcome our Honorable Minister of State for Ayush, Sri Srivat Nayak Ji, for coming and gracing us in their inaugural function. You are welcome, sir. And then we welcome our uh, Director General, CCRAS, Professor Vaidya K.S. Dimanji, for uh, coming and joining us in the inaugural function. And I welcome the other dignitaries on the stage, Dr. N. Shanmugam, Honorary Advisor, Thirmular Vermology Institute, Dr. S. Yoganathan, Orthopedic Surgeon, uh, former uh, Head of the Department of Orthopedics, IRT, Perugray Medical College. I welcome uh, Mr. Kannan, uh, Managing Trustee, Arts Research Institute, and uh, other officials and dignitaries from Ministry of Ayush, CCRAS, and not for the least, all the participants who have assembled here, and uh, we are very happy and glad to note that we have participants not only from the states in and around Delhi like uh, Haryana, Punjab, or Rajasthan, but we have people all the way come from Karnataka and Tamil Nadu and Kerala also for this workshop. Not only that, we have participants from US and Sweden also. So, on behalf of the Pramona Vormology Institute, I welcome you all for this inaugural function of the three-day workshop. And uh, before we proceed, I like to take a couple of minutes to introduce us about the uh, institute and who we are. And before going for the introduction of the institute, I'd like to take a couple of minutes to explain or uh, say our gratitude for the current government. As you can know, like the current government focuses on the ancient Indian sciences and Indian arts and in, only in this government a separate ministry for Ayush has been created in the year 2014. So I uh, wholeheartedly thank our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi ji for giving a prominence for Ayush and uh, creating a separate ministry in the name of Ministry for Ayush. And uh, going next, in uh, Tamil we have a proverb, what is it uh, called by Thiruvalluvar, Idhanai Idhanal Ivan Muhitku Mendra Indu Adhanai Adhankan Pudal. That means it is not just to have, have a great vision but we need a great executor to get it done. Otherwise, the vision may not be wholeheartedly fulfilled. And we are happy to note that our Honorable uh, Minister for Ayu Sri Sripad Nayak Ji has been the first Minister of uh, Ministry of Ayush and he is continuing in this uh, term also. Under his able leadership, the ministry has uh, reached a great heights and it has reached a lot of uh, people even for the recent uh, Ayushman Bharat, or technically what you call it as Pradhan Mandri Jan Arokya Yojana, the Ayush treatment protocol has been recommended for inclusion. Typically, we have only allopathy treatments being included in it, but now the Ayush treatments has been also been recommended by Minister of Ayush. So we thank our uh, Honorable Minister for uh, doing a lot of work in the field of Ayush and uh, promoting the uh, Indian science. and. Uh, before going to uh, the next personality, I like to remind the, about what our uh, Honorable Prime Minister did in the 74th session of United Nations General Assembly. He spoke a, a couplet from the Tamil language. Okay? Only after he spoke on 27th September of the last month, we got a tweet from uh, Anand Mahindra, the chairman of the Mahindra group, saying that he openly confessed that I am ashamed to confess that until the Prime Minister mentioned at the UN that Tamil is the oldest living language in the world. So even within India, people are not as exposed as Anand Mahindra, didn't know that there is the oldest living language in the sense which is spoken by more than 80 million people across the world. So in that sense, now our uh, Prime Minister is trying to integrate between the South and North, between the Tamil and Sanskrit, because there is always a, some misunderstanding going on. And our Prime Minister even uh, hosted the Chinese uh, President over there in Mahabalipuram 
to integrate and infuse the ideas about Tamil and Tamil culture for the India. And I think even before our uh, Director General Dimanji has started that work, because if you look at the Marma Shiricha, the words are called as Varmam in Tamil, but it is called in Marmam in uh, Sanskrit and Malayal. That is always a confusion between the people whether it's all one and the same. Literally both means, both have the same synonym, both are equal words, they mean the subtle energy. Okay, so what Dimanji did is he has inaugurated a program under which he wants to collect all literatures available in various languages because Siddha doctors practice it in the name of Siddha Varma, uh, Ayurvedic doctors call it as Marma Silcha, and we have Kalari practitioners call it as Kalari Marma, and uh, our institute we call it as Vedasakti Marmology. So it's all spread in different names, and he has a year back initiated a project so that collect literatures from everywhere. But if you go into the details of it, if you look at the ancient scripts, you will be surprised to know that a Tamil manuscripts on Burma, which is because typically it is all written in encrypted method so that it is not, the meanings are easily decipherable. The key to decipher is in the Upanishad. So there is always a link between Tamil and Sanskrit, North and South. If you look at even many sages, who are considered as Siddhas who created just uh, uh, manuscripts and written manuscripts on Burmology. They are all, the elderly persons are people who have migrated from North to South. So they are experts in both Sanskrit and Tamil. And you can give numerous examples, like for example the Ramanadi which is mentioned in the Sanskrit. It is more of a theory, but a sage, the Sivavakya speaks about how to use the Ramanadi to attain salvation or mukti. So, from the time immoral, there is no separation between the knowledge transfer between the South and North or Tamil and Sanskrit. These are all interconnected. So that is what uh, Imanji has started and that is what our institute has been following since 2003. Uh, there is nothing wrong in saying that before our institute came out and publicly started teaching this Marma Sincha or Varma Sincha, there is no Siddha practitioners or Ayurvedic practitioners who are using this pressure point application because typically Varmam or Varmam means people think it as a deadly art. So they are always afraid. I remember because we have a tie-up with the Ayurvedic Medical Association of India, Kerala uh, state that we have taught to more than uh, 2500 Ayurvedic doctors in the art of Marma In 2007 when we went, the Ayurvedic doctors would not even allow us to touch their body because they are always afraid that when the marmam is touched, something will bad will happen. Well, that is what the text says. So the Ayurvedic text says about what are the effects when the marmam is disturbed, but it didn't say what are the ways to use the same marma point to cure oneself. So that is where our institute has come. It is a unique development which has been come out in the name of uh, Veda Sikhi Medical Verbology which every branch has taken, Siddha doctors has taken and they are using it in the name of Siddha Varma and Ayurvedic doctors has, as I said, we have trained more than 2500 Ayurvedic doctors, they use it in the name of Marma Sircha. So ours is a universal open kind of a book and uh, anybody can use it. So even uh, if you can see our Alokali doctor Yogananda is sitting over here, so even they are using it. So how we are able to do it is, I like to introduce our uh, Guruji, Master, or however you call it, our professor, Khanavai advisor, Dr. N. Chakma. His doctorate, his doctor comes from doctorate, he is not a medical doctor. So he is a doctorate by doing a PhD in Tamil on an ancient manuscript. His PhD comes from deciphering a 5th century old manuscript. So he has experience of decoding and deciphering more than 120 different manuscripts on Varma Sircha. And not only that, he has learned Marma Sivicha practically from more than 75 masters. He has started this learning from the age of 16 and he has done more than 40 years of research in this field and he runs his family. His mother is his first guru, both his grandfathers from mother's side and father's side are uh, Marma experts, so it lands in his family. So he is able to combine the theory and practice and able to give a very simple, easy to for use form where, because right now, the method which this institute teaches is an economical method which we can reach everybody. Okay. So at this junction, I have I like to finish my speech with just one request for our honourable minister because we just want to remove the 
contributions in the world, Marma Sicha and Varma Sicha and being limited to Siddha or Ayurveda or anything, we want it to be a universal science which can be practiced by any system of uh, medicine. So we want that uh, to be done by our uh, Honorable Minister because we want to go with uh, Modi Ji's word, Sapka Sap, Sapka Vikas, Sapka Vishwas. Sapka Sap means we want to teach this art to all form of doctors. We don't want to segregate. Our institute want to train everybody. Sapka Sap, Sapka Vikas. Because the aim of the institute is to bring this economical form of hormone treatment to the entire public. So Sapka Vikas. Sapka Vishwas is we want to take everybody, not only India, the entire world, because if you take a medicine, uh, Ayurvedic medicine or a Siddha medicine, there are certain limitations and people try to restrict, saying that you have uh, some content in that or it is not approved, etc. But when you go with Varmish, it's all you go with is your hands. So nobody can stop an Indian science entering outside India because there is nothing they can restrict. So it is an easy way to reach Sub everybody so Sapka Viswa. So with this uh, kind request, I welcome you all for the three-day workshop. Thank you once again.